Yes, I am wearing a scarf indoors. Welcome to December in Scotland. I'm here today to talk about this fantastic book. This is The Winter Promise by Rosie Goodwin. This book was very kindly sent to me for review and I was drawn to it particularly because at Christmas time and in the winter time I do love a good family saga. I like to have a switch up from the usual sort of um, thrillers and horrors that I tend to read predominantly and I like to dip into something a little bit more sort of comforting and I find things set in the Victorian era very comforting. I love a good historical fiction and I love a good family saga and so this one really interested me and when I found out that Rosie Goodwin has been um, described as the new Catherine Cookson I was there for it because I grew up on Catherine Cookson books. I'm from the northeast of England originally and those are the books that I grew up around. My grandmother loved them, she passed them down. If you're not familiar with who Catherine Cookson is, she was a Victorian era writer from the from the northeast of England. There's just something so comforting stepping back into that sort of environment, which is sort of Victorian era family saga. So The Winter Promise follows a family in turmoil. You have a young family suffering bereavement and true to life at the time, if you lost family members such as your parents, as in this book, um, you lose your home because the home comes with the job and if your parents don't have the job anymore because they're dead, um, you're out on your ear basically. So we follow the two older children as they wonder what they're gonna do. They've lost their family and very quickly they become sick themselves and it leads the older brother Charlie to make an absolutely devastating decision for the family. Opal is our main character in this book and we follow her predominantly throughout the story. She is absolutely devastated by the choices that Charlie has made. And so Charlie ends up trying to do anything that he can to try and help the family out and to sort of win back a forgiveness. However, he manages to push it just that little bit too far and brings further devastation to the family. And so Opal ends up finding herself in a world where she is completely separated from all of her family. And this is obviously very hard for her to take and it's a heartbreaking situation for her to be in. Opal finds herself dreaming of getting her family all back together under one roof again and she makes a solemn promise to herself that she will reunite them all one day. And what follows is the story of Opal who just doesn't have it easy. She seems to have a lot of misfortune before her and she's living in a world of impossible choices. Staying true to the Victorian saga genre, there are a lot of triggering subjects that are brought up during the course of the book and um, if you are familiar with this sort of with this sort of book and um, the sort of things that they cover you will know what sort of things you are going to find within this book. I don't really want to go into what everything is because um, I, I do think it's a bit of a spoiler for the for the rest of the book really because you're going to get an idea of what happens to Opal basically throughout the book. So I'm not going to say exactly what all of these triggers are but I will say that she doesn't have a very easy life and um, a lot of things happen to her. This is the kind of book that you can while away the hours with. It's very immersive and it really held my attention and I just wanted to know what Opal was going to do and what was happening in her life and so I found myself just reading on and reading on and reading on to get to that next chapter to see if I had any more answers yet and that is one of the things that I really love about this style of book because they are this sort of book where you just slip away into another world for a while and you can forget the stresses and strains that are going on around you. I found it at times heartwarming but at other times it left me feeling bereft. There were just moments in this that really got to me which I do think is the difference of this genre. A good family saga has you on a roller coaster of emotions and that is exactly what this book does. You've got the strong bonds of family and love and everything that binds us together as people and as family even though we're separated. As expected with a family saga, this is not a short book, it's a thick book and it's a good one to just grab. As you'd expect with a family saga, it's not a particularly short read. This is a long, thick, meaty read that's going to keep you going right through December. So if this is the type of genre that you enjoy over December time, I really recommend this book. It's my first Rosie Goodwin book, but it definitely won't be my last because I really did get all of those sort of feelings that I used to get from my Catherine Cookson books that I used to just absolutely love. And um, so I can't wait to see what else Rosie Goodwin has to offer because I really love it when you're reading a book and you become so absorbed that you don't realise just how many hours have passed and you've been sitting there for ages. That is the type of book I need, especially for this year, because it has been one hell of a year, hasn't it? It really has. And um, just things just only keep getting more and more crazy, especially for me at the moment that I've got a lot going on and having something that I can just slip into and just drift away for a while is perfect for me. So as usual, let me know if you've read this, let me know if you're going to, and let me know if you've read any other Rosie Goodwin books and what you can recommend to me. Because like I say, my interest is now high in Rosie Goodwin's work. So I'm gonna go now and I will speak to you all soon. Bye for now.